Welcome to the Christian Church on this wonderful Sunday afternoon. We've been worshiping, we've been praising, now it's time for the living word of God. And we got an awesome topic today. We're going to talk about how God can resurrect the dry bones. We're going to start with our scriptures reading in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, beginning at the first verse. And I will begin... And my friend Paul will be assisting me as well. We will start at Ezekiel 37, verse 1. If you're there, say amen. Amen. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about and behold, they were, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So the Lord has taken Ezekiel and put him in a valley full of dry bones, obviously depicting the dead bones of dead bodies of people who were slain or people who had died. Oh. In any event, the Lord is setting this story up by putting Ezekiel in a valley full of dry bones. If you can read, starting at verse 3, Brother Paul. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophecy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Lord. Let's stop right there. So here we go. We're setting it up. And the Lord asked the question to Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, you know, or thou knowest. And he said, prophesy to these bones and tell these bones to hear the word of the Lord. So the word of the Lord is so powerful, it can speak to dry bones, and they have to obey. Now, if God's word is that powerful, that even the bones of dead bodies must obey, how much more are we accountable to obey every word that God says? How much more are we accountable to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. If the Lord has the power to take dry bones and raise them to life, how much can he take our dead dry lives and raise our life from the dead into something that is living, something that is powerful, something that is meaningful, something that is of great value in this life and then in the life to come. If we've been obedient, God has a reward for those who are faithful. But we're going to pick this story back up in verse 5, and we're going to see what's going to happen to these bones in a second here. Go ahead, brother. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put it breath in you in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord I will pick it up from here so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone and when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. God is so powerful. God spoke to the wind and said, Oh wind, you know, 
and the wind had to obey, and the breath came from the four winds and hit those bones, and bow, dynamite power, hit those bones, and those bones came to life, and he turned a valley full of corpses into an exceeding great army. Isn't that our God? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. So don't let nobody tell you that there's anybody that is more wiser or more smarter than our God. Nobody can manipulate him. Nobody can outthink him or outsmart him or outperform him. Our God is more than enough. He is, in fact, the creator of the universe. And when God speaks, things happen. So when Jesus talks, we need to be listening. When Jehovah God talks, we need to listen. When the Holy Ghost is speaking, we need to listen. Whatever God says, we are to listen, we are to obey. And the Bible says Ezekiel prophesied as the Lord commanded him. Notice obedience is taking shape here. Because Ezekiel was obedient to everything God said, God took and showed him a powerful event took place right before his very eyes and I'm sure Ezekiel was a little bit nervous don't you think when he saw those bones coming to life and bone connecting to bone remember that song these bones these bones these dry bones these bones these bones them dry bones them bones them bones them dry bones now these are the working of the Lord remember that the new bone connecting to the leg and all of that mm -hmm. okay. that's where that song see people made songs based on what they read in scripture. Now these are the workings of who? The Lord. We can't do that. We can't take the dead and bring them to life, but God can. Let's pick up in verse 12 if you want to read a little more. Therefore prophecy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves O my people and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land then shall ye know that I am the Lord that, that the Lord has spoken it and performed it Say it the Lord. Amen. Okay. We're going to stop right there. So God said not only did he speak to these dry bones, not only did he raise these bones to life, not only did he speak to the wind, and the wind had to bring the breath of life into these bones, but God said, I'm going to open the graves. And when you see the graves open and people coming up out of the graves, then you shall know that I am the Lord. Doesn't this sound familiar? This prophecy was fulfilled when? In the book of Matthew, when Jesus Christ hung and died on the cross at Calvary, when Jesus said it is finished and he gave up the ghost, the Bible says that the graves were opened. We're going to go to Matthew's chapter 27. Turn to Matthew's chapter 27, and this is powerful, man. God show me this. See, I thank God that He's faithful. All He's looking for is people who are willing to do His will. And He'll show you great and marvelous things that you know, that you know not. Never ever occurred to me, as much as I heard that story, I never occurred to me that this prophecy was fulfilled in Matthew. You know, we talk about the nation of Israel, and we know that they came, you know, they came to life. After and they were the desolate, prophecy. that was that prophecy, and Ezekiel. that was part of the prophecy. So but Ezekiel's in his vision. So Ezekiel's so in Ezekiel his vision. really, it wasn't like then it actually happened. Ezekiel seeing his vision. No, what happened was this really happened. Right when Ezekiel Ezekiel saw the vision and and no the bones. Came God said prophecy. Right. Prophecy means is to foretell. Mm -hmm. And Matthew is when it happened when Jesus die. No, but what I'm days, saying, right? hold, hold on, what I'm saying is this, Ezekiel actually was in a valley of dry bones, 
those bones actually came up. Then we came at his an army. time and his time and his time too. Okay. But it was a prophecy. It was a it was a symbol. God did that to oh, show you what was going to come again. Remember, okay, history repeats it. itself. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. You know, so the Bible says trip. in Ecclesiastes that <laughs> the things that was shall be again. So God used that example of bringing that army just to show him how great his power is. But then he began to prophesy into the future when he talked about the graves opening up mm -hmm. and people coming out, out of the graves. Now you're going to see the fulfillment of that right here in Matthews. So the bones, the dry bones, were for real. Mm -hmm. That really happened. Was Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw too. an army come out of the dry bones. Okay, was that just a vision though? It, he was in the spirit. No, it happened. It was okay. real life. Just okay. as sure as we're sitting here in this living room, it happened. Right. But then God said, I'm going to do something even greater than that. I'm going to bring the people up out of the graves. Okay. And he said, when you see them come out, then you shall know. So when the people came out, we're going to read this verse, okay. and I'm going to touch on it. They're going to see when those people came out. So there's no excuse for anybody that doesn't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, let me see where we're going to pick this up. Uh, verse 50. It says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept the roads and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching uh, Jesus saw the earthquake and these things that were done, they feared greatly saying, this truly, truly this was the Son of God. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. Did you see what happened here? Mm -hmm. The Bible says the dead bodies of the saints. This was people that died that knew Christ mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. Those people that died, but see the blood of goats couldn't get you into the presence of God. The blood of bulls and calves and lambs couldn't get you into the presence of God. But God reserved a place called paradise where they were comforted and taken care of. If you remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus, mm -hmm. where Lazarus was in paradise, escorted by angels, and the rich man, of course, died and was buried and lifted his eyes up in hell. And he could look over there and see Lazarus being comforted in the bosom of Abraham here. This is awesome. God caused those graves to come up those people to come out of the graves, but it wasn't just anybody. It wasn't the wicked. See, when you die in your sins, you're, you're lost. That's it. But when you die in Christ, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And because Jesus said it is finished, when he died and shed his blood, all those graves of those righteous were open. And when Jesus came back from the dead, many people came with him. And you know what these people thought about? They thought about the story of the dry bones. God said, I'll open the graves because they had the Old Testament scriptures. They had the law and the prophets and the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament. So when this happened, they said, wait a minute. This is a fulfillment of what happened in Ezekiel. So these people knew without a doubt that Jesus Christ was the fulfillment. He was the Messiah. He was the Son of God. And can you imagine the revival that broke out as a result of this when you got dead saints? Can you imagine? We don't know if it was Abraham, if it was David, who it was, but the Bible says many of them. And this is in Hebrews that people had their dead relatives returned to them. This is just how powerful God is. When God does something, he'll turn around and do something again. This is what prophecy, prophecy is proclaiming the word of the Lord, and prophecy is foretelling what's going to happen. But it's prophecy because it's going to happen. It ain't like some psychic that tells you some dumb stuff 
and it never comes to pass and they take all your money, this is something when God says something, it is for sure. And just also because Paul says, uh, I would have you prophesy all the spirit gifts that the spirit Yes, teaching. Paul said greater he that you prophesy. And teaching gifts, but he I would have you prophesy because when Jesus did everything, he prophesied. That's right. He got into the uh, He spoke. The he Bible spoke in says, the synagogue and he told them, This is now fulfilled what I am yes. telling you now. Yes. And it was all about prophecies. This scripture is fulfilled in years when he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, and this is wonderful. We're putting this right on tape because of the simple fact that here we can talk about it and expound on the word and get a true understanding of what it's saying. You know? But it's powerful that Jesus said, Jesus said it is finished at the cross. He gave up the ghost. See, the blood of Jesus paid for our sins. So those people who are teaching false doctrine and saying that Jesus had to go to hell and suffer for three days are telling the devil's so, lie. Because when Jesus said it was finished, there are many people out here that, that believe that Jesus was tormented in hell for three days. Now, I think he went down to proclaim victory. Exactly. And show put the shame the demons in. Exactly. Say, you ain't going nowhere. It's That's what gone. he did. He you didn't suffer the torment hell. of hell. <laughs> Jesus paid it all at the cross. Clean. I guess this, you know. So when his blood <laughs> like, <laughs> was sprinkled on the mercy seat in heaven, when his blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat in heaven, the final payment was made for all of our sins. When we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, these dry bones, you were dead and dry in your sinful life, doing all the desires that your heart told you to do. Lying, stealing, cheating, having sex outside of marriage, doing all those things, cursing, gambling, all of those things, gossiping, you know, bad-mouthing people, backstabbing, all of these things that we did. The works of the flesh. Like the, uh, yes. Idolatry, witchcraft. Galicious all of these things <clears throat> we were cleansed from. When we come in a relationship with Jesus and say, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus rose from the grave on the third day. He rose from the dead just like he said. And that he ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father. When you proclaim that and when you repent of your sins and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me in your precious blood. Do you understand? Your debt is paid for and you don't ever have to go back to what it was that Jesus redeemed you from. Eternal life is yours, and it's yours forever if you continue to obey God and keep His commandments. His blood will continually cleanse you. His blood will continually make you in right standing with the Father. So when you do what the Bible says, and you confess your sins, and come to Jesus, and believe with all your heart that Jesus raised, was Christ was raised from the dead as... Susan said last week in the housewarming, you shall be saved. You not only must confess with your mouth, but you must believe with all your heart. You can't waver from this thing. And Jesus is, when you get in the Bible, it's just so wonderful how you can take the Old and New T Testament and connect the dots just like that. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the wisdom to do that. But you must be born again in order to see this type of revelation. You can't do this. You can't live a halfway life. You can't be lukewarm. And when you give your life to Jesus, God will show you things about the Bible that will blow your mind. This blew my mind when I read this, and then it hit me that when those people came out of those graves, it was a fulfillment of, the prophecy. of what Jesus, you know, what the Lord spoke to Ezekiel way back mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. Isn't that wonderful? Let's give God some praise. We're going to pray and we're going to close out. We're going to pray for one another and we're going to ask God's blessing on each and all and everyone that is here. And I'm just thankful for this opportunity to share the gospel with you. And I'm going to sit down and get up close and personal. Because here at the Christian Church, we are a family. We are not